high above the jungles of northern Guatemala. It's incredible! Long abandoned cities. Once, we thought they were home to perhaps a million ancient Maya. But we were wrong. Today, for the first time, archaeologists from Guatemala, Mexico, the U.S. are on a race to uncover some of this jungle's greatest secrets. Because right now, discoveries are being made that suggest the Maya population here was 10 times bigger than anyone had ever thought before. And that has stunned the world. Standing right at the heart of Chunantunich, a royal palace. That's where the elite lived. If we were to have gone back in time, none of the riffraff, including us, would have been allowed up there unless we were very special guests of the rulers that resided up there. And I think if we just decided to go walk up there and, uh, you know, on a whim, uh, we could have paid for it dearly. Jaime's excavations at Chunantunich are unearthing treasures. Well, I think we have a little figurine head. Did you guys see that? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a little face. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's the nose. There's the mouth. You can actually see like little teeth. Look at that, he's cute. In fact, it's a musical wind instrument called an ocarina, more than a thousand years old. Sometimes it's the little things that you find that, you know, makes what you do interesting. It certainly made my day. As well as the palaces and plazas of Shunantunich, there was also a special arena where two teams competed in a game that ended in ritual sacrifice. We're in the middle of the ball court at uh, Shinantanich. The aim was to get a ball to the opponent's end of the court without it being returned. Elite local warriors would play captured opponents. But the outcome was usually fixed. One of the captive losers would be sacrificed to the gods often by decapitation. Beneath the ball court at Sunantunich, Jaime is unearthing symbolic offerings. There's always a scorpion. They do love their scorpions. Yeah. Carvings of scorpions represented gods of the underworld. You see, like the the little legs of the scorpion and the, the claws at the front. So this is our sixth scorpion. Yeah. It's thought they were buried here to sanctify the arena. One offering in particular has caught Jaime's attention. It's been hidden from view for over a thousand years and we get to see it for the first time. It's a precious piece of naturally occurring glass called obsidian. Important to the Maya because it's sharp and could be used to make knives. Obsidian was to the Maya as steel is to us. It's the best blades you can find. But this obsidian could only have come from a volcanic region of Guatemala over 200 miles south of Shunantunich. Obsidian is an imported rock, so it had to be brought in from the highlands of Guatemala. It's volcanic. We have no volcanoes in Belize. And it was traded all over Mesoamerica. Trade between distant jungle cities was far from straightforward. The Maya did not have access to pack animals like horses or cows. So archaeologists always thought that goods were transported by foot. But new LiDAR discoveries are now suggesting that the Maya might have also used rivers.
80 miles from Shunantunic, back in Guatemala, U.S. archaeologist Damien Markin is excavating at the center of a Maya trading hub called El Paru. We have nice plates. We actually have these polychrome pottery. Um, very fancy, late classic. Um, so, you know, we're talking 6th, sixth, 7th, sixth, 8th century, basically a large dish, a serving dish. A lot of the stuff might actually fit back together. So we have this nice, fancy stuff here. Astonishing domestic treasures, unseen for almost 1,500 years. Oh, oh my gosh. 